When you see this scene, it's quite possible that you already know where we are, because today we are celebrating an awesome golf experience that stretches across two courses. One of them is the original course at Arcadia Bluffs, and the other is Arcadia South, an homage to classic course design from architect Dana Fry. Two great courses, one awesome Arcadia experience. That's our focus today. Welcome to Michigan Golf Live Television, celebrating our 20th season of shining the spotlight on the best places to stay, play, and enjoy the greatest game on earth. Stay connected 24-7 to MGL on Facebook, Twitter, our weekly radio show, and podcasts on the all-new 4golfersnetwork.com. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of our program. I'm Bill Hobson. It's great to have you with us as we showcase one of the great golf destinations anywhere in America. It's Arcadia Bluffs, where they've combined two golf courses into one awesome golf experience. Now, it was back in 1999 when this original Bluffs course made its debut. And then just a few years ago, Dana Fry and a talented team of architects came together to build the South Course. And perhaps the most frequently asked question that I receive is, how are those two courses different? So we've dedicated today's program to showing you two great courses, comparing and contrasting with the same set of holes on each course so you can get a feel for how differently they play and how excellent they both are overall. And by the way, it's more than just golf here at Arcadia that makes it a bucket list destination. It's everything. And we'll show you some of that as well. But first, let's get right out to golf and start our parallel tour of the two courses right here on the Bluffs course. Let me introduce to all of you the head golf professional for the Bluffs course, Eric Zuberbeer. How are you, man? Doing great. Welcome, Bill. Welcome back. It is so good to be here and in this special place. When you first set foot on the property here, what did you think? It's magnificent. I and mean, as you pull up the drive and just you get to the clubhouse and see the lake in the background, you, know, you see the rolling hills at number one as you come in. And it just gets better and better as you get to the clubhouse and, and look out over the lake. You and I are gonna tackle the bluffs. We're gonna compare and contrast to the south course. So let's go right to the first tee here on the bluffs and it, it's a gentle start to your day. It is, it, it, the prevailing wind generally is off the lake. So the bunker on the right is reachable uh, for a lot. You're gonna aim at that left side, uh, the, the left hand bunker and uh, just keep it in the short grass and, and give yourself a look to go after in two. When we jump ahead to that third tee box, and for the first time you turn and you face Lake Michigan in what looks like an infinity green on that par five, it's jaw dropping. Yes, it's incredible. It's the highest point on our property, so you can see forever um, down to the lake. And as you said, the whole three is a, is a plateau green. You don't see anything behind it. And, and you're up for a surprise when you get up there and see two more holes uh, to go. Yet as far away as that green looks from the tee box, it's very reachable. Yes. and. Depending on the wind, again, the prevailing's off the lake, so the majority of the time you're going to play that one into the wind. Um, you got a lot of room to the right to, to bail out to, and you just have to avoid that big sand trap right up front with the stack side. So a big hitter like you takes number three and thinks of it in terms of it being a par four, but it is a par five, which means you've got two of those right out of the gate to kind of give you a soft start to the day. And then we're jumping ahead to number five, where we get another one. Another par five. Five's a beautiful hole, because uh, it's very placement oriented off the tee. If you're up that left half, you need a little risk reward, you have a chance to go for it in two, but it's all a force carry. Um, if you end up center, right center, you, you got a lot of room to lay up, but you gotta be careful at the layup shot, because you can find yourself into trouble there as well, uh, even to get the short little wedge in. So well, there's a lot of bunkers that are guarding that green, and the green has multiple levels to it where if you try to hit it in two, it's very difficult to hold it, especially on the front tier where we play today. Absolutely. We're gonna jump ahead a little bit more. We go to number eight, and eight has a special feature to it. Now it's an uphill tee shot. It's not necessarily super long, although it's a difficult second shot, made even more difficult by? A very uh, tall stack side bunker. Our tallest on the course standing at 12 feet high. Uh, <laughs> it's a very short par four. You're gonna have a, a wedge to a, a short iron in but you have to carry that sand trap. It's okay to be a little long in the green. Um, it can cause a lot of trouble. The ninth is a fun par three, which does not mean it's an easy par three to round out the front. Um, a little short and you're down in the valley, yes. a little bit left, you're up in the, in the deep stuff. So the strategy there is 
center of the green. <laughs> Just yeah, get it to the center. You have to know the wind. We played into a pretty strong wind today. It was at least two clubs. Um, you got a pretty good backstop on the back, so you can go long of the flag and have it feed back towards the center, uh, but you have to get over that front third or it's going to come off the green probably 30 yards. Eric and I will return in a few moments to take you to the back nine of the Bluffs course, but first, we're now going to head over to show you the front, the same holes we just discussed, at the south course, because I am often asked, what's the difference between the two? Well, that's what we're here to showcase today. So now, let's go over to Arcadia South. And when you tee it up on the Arcadia South course, it is indeed a very different experience. Here to help take us on a guided tour, is the head golf professional here, Dustin Darling. Hey, Bill. It's good, good to see, see you. you. Likewise. When you're asked about the South Course, how do you succinctly describe what it is, what it's like? Um, I try to help people understand that it plays very much like a traditional link style golf course. Um, it's very fast and firm on the surface, so you have to use your creativity and land the ball a little bit short to try to work these, uh, work your shots back towards the flag sticks. There's this concept of the ground game that we don't often play in America. It's Very more true. commonly associated with golf in Europe. So what's the ground game according to Dustin Darley? Um, the ground game to me is uh, lots of times around the green, uh, making the high percentage play by you know, keeping, uh, keeping the aerial game out of it, um, but keeping it on the ground with the putter or even the bump and run like we've been trying here on the front nine. It's a skill that's not easily acquired. It does require a bit of practice because on these greens, which are generally firm and fast, if you get that ball coming in a little hot, you might want to go grab your wedge because you're coming back up the other side, maybe out of a bunker. Very true. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, side and false fronts on these greens. So if uh, if you get a little bit too much steam on it, lots of times you'll have to uh, bring that wedge with you just in case. So let's head right to the first tee and, and walk through the same holes here that we played over at the Bluffs course and compare and contrast. So number one at the Bluffs is a par five. Here it's a par four with a kind of a unique green to introduce you to play at the south. Definitely, yeah, number one here at the south is a uh, kind of a straightaway par four and it has interesting cross bunkers lining the fairway. But my first thought when I step on number one is where's the pin location today? Because you want to favor uh, one side of the fairway or the other to give yourself that good angle to use the ground game. That green is how big? Uh, it's over 11,000 square feet. So <laughs> There's like 85 pin placements available on that green. Now they're not all 11,000 square feet, but as we see that, that complex, the setting of the green on number two, it's just beautiful back in the corner of the property, surrounded by the woods, again, bunkering to protect that green. And then after you make your par or birdie on number two, you step onto number three at over 600 yards. I'm glad I had a big hitter with me like you to take us through three. Yeah, sometimes it feels like you almost had to play that one for a whole day. It's uh, it's over 600 yards, usually into a prevailing wind. Um, two really good golf shots will get you, you know, probably a full wedge or a short iron into that green. So um, not many players are getting there in two, but you gotta hit some quality golf shots into the wind on number three. Number five would be a great place to wear out the middle of the green. You told me off camera <laughs> that that's the hardest par three you play anywhere. I agree, yes sir. Yeah, it's uh, a very demanding golf shot. You have to, uh, you really have to land it in the middle of the green. If not, we have some contours that'll pitch you into some bunkers or some, uh, some diff difficult uh, closely mown areas around the green. So that's a demanding shot. Three, four, five, you gotta hit some golf shots. All right, we go to number nine to round out the front. Take us from tee to green on nine. Uh, number nine is a long par four, a uh, good way to uh, finish the front nine. Gonna, gonna call for a, uh, a high draw off the tee with the fairway sloping right to left. Um, also, um, number nine, there's no bunkers guarding the front of the green. Uh, that's by design. We're looking to land the ball short as it's uh, sloped downhill and you can just run it onto the middle of the green. Uh, you'll also see two spectacle bunkers um, on the fairway on number nine, which is a, uh, a feature you'll see a lot overseas as well. So there's the front nine at the south course. Dustin will join me again a little bit later on in the program and we'll take you on a tour of the beautiful back nine here at Arcadia South. We are just getting started with our showcase of this very special place, Arcadia Bluffs. Two great courses, one awesome experience. And that experience reaches off of the golf course and into every part of your visit, including dining. I mean, take a look at this table. How about we start you off with some baked brie and move you over to the lamb chops with Brussels sprouts. Maybe you're in the mood for some sea bass with lobster or my personal favorite, the jumbo scallops. It's good stuff and we can round it all out with some homemade cherry pie. They grow the cherries locally. 
There's another element to all of this, something that you don't find very many places. Have you ever had a smoked beverage? This is the old-fashioned smoked maple under glass. For an experience I don't think very many of you have enjoyed. I know I haven't. There's so many special things to explore here at Arcadia Bluffs, and we'll continue telling that story after this. Welcome back into our special presentation of Arcadia Bluffs. Two great courses, one awesome experience. We'll get back to the golf courses here in just a couple of moments. But that awesome experience is more than just the golf course. It reaches beyond that into the places that you'll stay here, to the food that you'll enjoy and the service that's provided. My friend Bill Shriver is the president here at Arcadia Bluffs. That, that Arcadia experience involves all of those things, right? It does, Bill, and it's our pleasure to welcome you back to Arcadia yeah, it's Bluffs. It's good to be here. We're always glad to be here. This place just keeps getting better year after year. How do you do it? <laughs> well, it takes a lot of commitment from Mr. Postma, our owner, of course, and total commitment from the entire staff that we have at Arcadia Bluffs, the commitment to our mission, and the commitment to our service standards that we have at Arcadia. Now, golf is at the core of it all, but there's a lot more to it than just golf here. Well, the most important thing that we want people to know is that we appreciate that they're here, and we value their business, and it's just our pleasure to host you. The Arcadia experience is rounded out for those who stay on property by some pretty special lodging options. So I just came out of this cottage. Take us inside of it. What makes this a, a great place for your group to call home? Well, I think the one thing that people talk about the most is how the layout and the aspects of the cottage work for every style of group, whether you have four guys or four couples or a family. Uh, there's space, they're 2,000 square feet, there's four bedrooms, there's four bathrooms, everyone can have their own space when needed. And of course you have the great room in the middle to gather together or you can come outside and enjoy these wonderful chairs and this, uh, this pretty good view we have yeah. here. Another lodging option is the beautiful lodge, just a few steps behind the 10th tee. The views, if you're on the lakeside, are just spectacular. What year for the lodge and what's it like in there? Uh, the new Bluffs Lodge was opened in 2017 on July 4th. And that has a different type layout where the rooms are all two queen beds. But again, they're sized and laid out such where it's comfortable for two individuals to be there. They're not on top of each other. And then, of course, the views are just as spectacular. Fitness centers in the basement, uh, meeting room on the second floor. And again, that spaciousness and the privacy that you're looking for uh, when you come to Arcadia Bluffs. And then sometimes there's just a couple. And they want to stay in a nice room, maybe in the main lodge. And if you look up on that second floor, there are even some rooms up there. Absolutely. It's just the, the whole atmosphere here. We want it to be comfortable, private, and just a special getaway for, for our guests. And I think we've been able to do that over the years. Well, as you know, and we've learned this over the years, I also really enjoy the dining room area quite a bit. And I know Arcadia pays great attention to that dining experience, both here and over at the South Course. Well, I think it's very similar, Bill, to the lodging and the golf, actually, where we wanted to give you more options. So at the South Course, you have a much more casual setting for dining. Service and, and quality of food is still first class, but you have a different feel down there. There's not linens on the tables. It just has a more casual feel. Um, at the main lodge and the main dining room, it's a little more formal feel with linens on the tables, uh, separate menus. Uh, but again, the whole aspect of Arcadia Bluffs is we start at the guests and move backwards. And so we want to create an environment where you have options to suit all, all interests. Every time you pull back in here, as you drive in, you're reminded why Arcadia is so special. And it's everything. It's our staff and our dedication again of Mr. Postma, his commitment to excellence and the standards that we've set and the expectation that those standards get met and we have fun doing it. I mean, everybody that works here, hopefully you get that, the guests get that feeling and I hear, we hear that a lot from guests where we'll get emails or calls and say, everybody just seemed to be having fun from, from the staff that works here to the guests and that's what we want to create and, and that's what we want to maintain and it's, it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to have a bad day out here. We are going to head back to the golf course here in just a couple of moments, but before we take you to the back nine of both the Bluffs and the South, let me bring in the director of golf here, Chris Severe, 
Good afternoon. And, uh, it's good to see you, man. Welcome back. And two great courses, one awesome experience. To you, what is the definition of the Arcadia experience? Uh, it, it's really as soon as you pull in the driveway. You, know, you can't really see much of the property. You can't really see the lake. Uh, but when you, when you come down the drive and you kind of come over the hill, uh, you see the golf course, you see the clubhouse, and then you see the lake. Um, I mean, we work the bag drop sometimes. There's nothing better than the bag drop. Individuals are here for the first time. They're out of the car. It's right to the, it's right to the phone in pictures. Yeah. I mean, almost instantly, especially if you haven't been here before. Well, earlier in the program, we showcased the front nine of both the Bluffs and the South course. When we come back, we take you to the back nine of both courses. A little compare, a little contrast on how differently they play and how excellent they both are. Stick around. Welcome back to our special showcase of two great courses, one awesome Arcadia experience. I know what you're thinking. Wasn't he just eating earlier in the show? Well, first, in my defense, I've worked up quite an appetite thus far showcasing the front nine at both the Bluffs course and the South course. And now we're about to head back out to the back nine of both courses, so I need my energy. We also wanted to give you a little flavor, no pun intended, for how good the food is over here at the South course as well. Because no matter where you choose to play or where you choose to dine, there are no wrong choices here at Arcadia Bluffs. Two great courses, one awesome experience. Welcome back to the Bluffs course. I mean, where else could we be with this sort of a backdrop? As we make the turn now and head to the back nine, let me bring Eric Zuberbeer back in. They were giving me a lesson on how to properly play earlier on the front. <laughs> so now we make the turn and right off the bat, we see the imposing number 10 with a bunker that seems to be three or four stories tall. Yeah, so that one's the second tallest, 10 feet high. Uh, stacks out and it, it definitely protects the left pin location. So depending on uh, the shot you have in, the club you're selecting, right's okay. And as everybody saw earlier in the show, that's only the second tallest bunker here at Arcadia. Now, I have said this for years, number 11 is my favorite hole on the earth. I've had the opportunity to travel to a few different places. I love number 11. What's special about it? It's a fantastic par five. It's downhill. We were fortunate enough today to play it downwind. Uh, honestly, a lot of folks will probably hit the longest drive of their career uh, because it is <laughs> severely downhill and to the right. Um, risk reward. So the further you can play it left, the further it's going to kind of go straight down the hill before it makes that right turn. And then the second shot is it's very narrow. So you just got to keep it in the short grass and let it run on out to the front of the green. Yeah, you could say that the toughest shot on 11 might be the second shot, depending on what your plans are. I would agree. Yeah, if you put it up in the up in the bluffs, you're going to have a tough, tough third shot. Um, and right, there's a there's a short bunker on the uh, on the right front. So depending on your sand game, once you get to 11 green, it starts this beautiful stretch right along the bluff overlooking Lake Michigan. So we go right to number 12, which has had a little facelift to it and some options added. Yes. So we've added a second green on the right. Uh, this is just gonna give us some variability from a day-to-day -day basis. So those that play two days in a row, one day we'll be on the right green, one day we might be on the left. Uh, they play a little differently and uh, it makes it the widest fairway on the golf course now because you got kind of two fairways merged into one. And that new green to the right on number 12 leads to a couple of new tee boxes for number 13 and kind of a reframing of that perspective into that par three, it's beautiful. Yeah, so with the uh, with moving the tee boxes over to build that new green, now you got a little bit more of an angle towards the water instead of along the water. Um, so club selection's key, it's very easy to bail right, that's safe. And uh, again, just you gotta know the wind in your club yardages. The wind is very prevalent on 13. Let's skip ahead to number 15. It's a pretty imposing looking hole. It's very playable, but we had today a hole location on the far left of that green. So after a big tee shot, you really need to strategize where you're gonna put shot number two, because it's too far left and you're gonna be out there a while. Yes, and it's not an easy layup. We have a sand trap about 100 yards out, right in the middle of the fairway. So not only do you have to navigate that sand trap, then you have one short of the green. Uh, the entire green slopes right to left, so you can really hang out to the right and then the left side is bigger than it looks. There's a big bowl that you can't see that's guarded by the green. So if you can get it up in that bowl, you'll find yourself eight, 10 feet away. Now, Eric, I've been coming here for a number of years and I have played number 17 uh, many, many times. 
I don't think I have ever recorded an actual birdie on 17. What is it about this par three that intimidates golfers? It's not often that you see a par three that looks very narrow. You know right is dead. Uh, right is a, a 20 foot drop off. It's gonna leave you a very tough flop shot. And left, you're in the dunes. So if a ball gets caught up in the dunes, that chip shot is near impossible to get to stop. Um, so all you have, it's almost like an island green without any water around it, uh, even though it isn't. So it's, it, you gotta know your club in the wind and probably avoid going right. Now we are standing high atop the tee box for number 18, the home hole, which quite often concludes with a gallery yes. up in the Adirondack chairs, yes. adding a little more drama to it. So take us through 18. 18, you have a tee shot with a fairway bunker uh, early in the fairway. For the bigger hitters, you should be able to carry that pretty easily. Um, if it's downwind, as the prevalent wind is, the, the far left bunker can be reachable. And then it's an uphill second shot into, as you said, uh, a, a green that's very well guarded. You can't see very well, so trust the GPS on, on the carts. And when you get up there, um, you'll have a, a couple dozen people watching if the weather's nice and uh, put some pressure on those final putts. Always make sure you tip your hat to the gallery. Absolutely. The final nine holes on the Bluffs course really does present a great test of your game. And the same can be said for the final nine on the south course. So we bring Dustin Darling, the PGA Pro, here at the south back in. We make the turn now and compare both final nines. Take us to number 10 and what challenge that presents as we make the turn. Number 10 is a, uh, a par four that plays usually right into a prevailing wind. You got a couple two uh, bunkers on the right side of the fairway. Um, a, uh, a fairway shot down the left side will give you a good angle into the flag stick. And it does play a little bit uphill, so I'd take an extra club into number 10. Then we flip directions and we head exactly the opposite way for a 570-ish yard par five 11th hole. Yes, sir. The 11th is a, uh, a long par five, but it's often downwind and it's one of the more firm fairways on the golf course. So uh, I think you can take advantage of that one, hit a couple good shots, and you might even chase it up to the front of the green. Um, really want to make sure you stay off on the left side of the fairway, uh, giving you a better angle into that back right flag pin. Yeah, we played there today and it was perched out there on the right and only because of your precision wedge game were we able to even sniff a birdie. You know, I caught that one good. I don't know if I could do it again, but it was, uh, it's a demanding, uh, a demanding par five and takes some accuracy with the short iron. When you step off the back of that 11th green, you instantly see the beautiful 12th hole, a par three horseshoe, kind of an upside down U-shaped green, probably the, the largest elevation change on this golf course. That's a really cool par three. Absolutely, it's a very unique part of the property. Um, it plays down the hill and the way that green really frames in that, uh, that low part. Okay, so now we get to 13T and you can't see the green. It's hidden kind of around the corner and hidden again by a couple of moguls in front. Take us tee to green on 13. I love that hole. Yeah, it's a beautiful golf hole. Uh, off the tee, you're looking to hit it straight out uh, at the bunker. Um, you'll see it, uh, it does dogleg a little to our right-hand side. But inter interesting enough, you can't see the green at all from your approach. You might see a little barber pole back behind it. If you can't see the flag stick, aim at that. But uh, that one also plays uphill, and it seems like you always get a pleasant surprise when you're up there because the green is, uh, is shaped in a little bit of a bowl. So oftentimes it funnels funnel shots a little bit closer to the hole for you. As much as we would love to show you 14, 15, and 16, time doesn't allow for that. So let's jump right ahead to number 17. Over on the bluffs, that's a par three. Here, it's a pretty stout par four with some interesting features along the way. There sure is. Yeah, number 17 is a par four playing a little bit up the hill. You'll see along the left side, we have some, uh, some church pew style bunkers. They're a little bit more of a staircase. They tend to elevate a little bit. Uh, if you catch it on downwind day, you might be able to take the driver over it, but I think today we're, uh, we're going to stay right and try to give ourselves a, a good position for a nice approach shot in. It leads right over to the home hole, so take us home. Take us home. We're aiming. Uh, the aim line is going to be at pretty much the only interior tree on property. If we can work a little bit of draw off that tree, you'll be in a, uh, a good spot. The green in the hole is a little bit similar to number nine, a very demanding par four. You got to hit two solid golf shots and anywhere on the green and two is a, a well played hole. Well, thanks for being my tour guide around the south course. You've got some game, man. It's good to, it's good to see how it's supposed to be played. Thank you. It was a pleasure playing with you today. We've come to the end of our time here at this special place known as Arcadia Bluffs. Two awesome golf courses and one great experience. And that experience is made special because of a number of traditions. None more notable than a perfect sunset over Lake Michigan with the fescue gently waving in the breeze 
and the unmistakable sounds of the bagpiper, rounding out your ideal Arcadia experience. 